Welcome back. You're listening to the discussion Innovation in Government, sponsored by Kerasoft on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today is Amy Button, the Vice President of Aerospace Defense and Government Systems Integrators at Salesforce. Amy, before break, we talked a little bit about the idea of hiring and, and retaining workers. What we've seen recently, and I think it, it's, it's kind of gotten a, a renewed focus, it's a lot of more attention paid to it, is ensuring that your workforce has diversity inclusion in it. So how do you kind of reach out to new different places to hire people? How do you get different people in to, to give different thoughts, whether it's by gender or by race or by sexuality or whatever it is? The idea here is, is how do you ensure that you have this diversity of thought in the workplace? Give me a sense of how you're approaching this and what are you seeing from, from your, your clients and customers as well? Sure, it's a very important topic for us. And it's not just because it's something that we have solutions for, but it's because it's something that we are living as part of our core values. So our core values are trust, customer success, innovation, and equality. For example, we have 12 equality groups and affinity groups which surround those, those equality groups. And we have an office of equality which focuses on diversity and inclusion with a dedicated set of resources, including our C-suite executive, our chief equality officer who oversees a lot of that work. So it's something that we believe in at our core and it's something that some of our customers are recognizing and asking us how we do that and asking to see what that playbook looks like, so how they can make it even more a part of their organizations and their DNA. I, I'm feeling very hopeful from what I am seeing as I'm talking to some of the A&D customers as well as their government SI customers on their focus on it and some of the things that they're doing to help ensure that inclusive, inclusivity, diversity, equality, are all part of their practices as well. And they're using us as the gold standard because of what we're doing. It really comes back to something you said last segment was make it easy, make it enjoyable or as much as you can mm -hmm. the hiring process. And people kind of will, will, will word of mouth, they'll, they'll, oh, you know what? I had a good experience. You should have a good experience. You should give it a try. And if they see that the company is, is open to recruiting from different places, different people, different types, then that, that also provides a, a good piece. Uh, is there something that you guys are doing around talent management that you can maybe talk to uh, in, in terms of, well, we always did it one way and over the last year, six years, whatever it's been, you've, you've shifted. Is there any examples you'd be comfortable? There's one large a and company, I'm sure there's a number, but there's one that comes to mind right now that I know for their interview process. One thing that they're doing is they're ensuring that for every open role, they have to have a diverse pool of folks that are interviewing, doing the interviews, as well as a diverse pool of people that are candidates. And it helps ensure at the end of the day, a diversity of thought. And that's something that has been particularly effective for them. And when you look at across their C-suite, their executives, you also see a diverse group of people, which I, I highly respect when I see that across any company, because it means they're not only talking the talk, but they're walking the walk. I think that when you can have that diverse group of people asking the questions, I think that also applies to technology. It applies to almost anything you do. And it just, people bring that different perspective that says, oh, I didn't think about it that way, or vice versa oh, we should add that piece because not everyone looks at it the way I do or the way you look at it. And I, I think that's exactly. so important. Exactly. When you have, when you don't have, when you have a homogeneous group, you don't get that diversity of thought because you're around people that think like you. <laughs> you don't get, you don't get those different perspectives. I, in graduate school, I, I did a research project on this and looking at that from heterogeneous versus homogeneous groups and which ones end up having uh, better Im a bigger impact and it's those heterogeneous groups so you that's something that companies are adopting having that culturally diverse mix of people and from all different types of backgrounds and guess what why is it important to companies too it's good for the company and the core values and the people that you're recruiting but then it's also better for business and they have better results better revenue better growth and it, it it's a it's a full it's a full circle of benefits for everyone um, when companies do adopt that. 
I think that's a great point that you have to look at the broader picture of how having a diverse thought, diverse workforce matters, not just to, oh, it's the right thing to do per se, but hey, this really benefits us from the bottom line, from the top line and everything in the middle. Speaking of, of, of things from the top down, the bottom up in the middle, security, and let's maybe shift gears a little bit. I know it's not necessarily a, a logical shift, but when it comes to cybersecurity, that's another area where diversity of thought matters. It's also another area where agencies are spending a lot of time on. And over the last couple of years, two, three years, the focus on the supply chain risk has really uh, gained more attention across the government. And from that grew the cybersecurity maturity model certification, the CMMC program from DOD. It's starting to get kicked into gear this fall, and we're going to see it later into the winter and into 2021. What are you starting to hear, see about CMMC? Is there a lot of concern in the industry? And w why is this important to Salesforce? There's certainly a lot of concern about what, what do companies do? How do we manage this? Um, that's what I'm hearing from, from customers. And they're trying to figure out how they're going to navigate it. It's something that they've been thinking about for a while now. It's been, I want to say, 18 months, two years that it's been something that is out there. It is coming now. There's going to be the first 10 RFPs which have CM CMMC requirements are going to be coming out soon. So companies are certainly thinking about this. But as you mentioned, Jason, it's a security framework to help protect the DOD supply chain at the foundation. That's, that's what it is. And all DOD contractors are going to have to be CMMC certified on a level to, in order to bid on those future contracts. So it is eminent that they have to start working on the, on the certification. And I think some of the things I'm hearing as well is that because the third party governing body is not fully in place yet, there's a little bit of ambiguity there as, as that is being fig figured out. Um, but to your last question, you're asking how Salesforce is thinking about it. And one of the things that we're doing to help our customers is creating a basic framework so that customers can achieve DFARS 7012 compliance with Salesforce. And it's three different components. We can baseline security controls, provide cyber incident reporting, and cyber forensics. So those are some of the ways that we're thinking about it. There's a lot of, uh, I think, concern in the industry about CMMC, without a doubt. A lot of people are kind of waiting to see what, what this means, how it's gonna work, what those first contracts are gonna look like. And, and interestingly enough, even the civilian world is starting to pay attention. I, I know you focus necessarily on aerospace and defense, but what we're starting to see, and, and for instance, uh, there's a contract put up by GSA where they actually say, we may ask you to be CMMC certified. So I think that that's an interesting turn as well. It, are you starting to, how, how much are you talking with your industry peers, your industry customers about CMMC? Does this come up quite often? This is something I believe in the back of everyone's mind. And it's something that people may not think of Salesforce, as having some capabilities around. So it is something that we have brought up because as I mentioned before, we have some capabilities and a basic framework to be able to help customers with. But it's something that I, I believe a lot of the government SIs and the aerospace and defense companies feel like they need to figure this out on their own. But there are companies, tools and technologies that are out there to help them in that journey. Amy, this has been a great conversation. We're just about out of time. Before I let you go, a couple of things. Just I want to tag us back around to the beginning of, of our discussion where we start talking about kind of digital transformation a little bit. And, and I think what's happening here is the pandemic has, has forced agencies, companies to rethink several areas. Hiring, we've talked a lot about this idea of, of the technology and, and, and underpinning kind of the, the future of how they work, where they work how they meet mission goals. What, what's the one or two big things that the, you wanna make sure people take away from our conversation today around digital transformation, hiring and the like? I think when, um, a couple things, and, and thank you, Jason. Companies remaining ahead of the digital transformation curve are going to come out even stronger and overcome this downturn and any future downturns. So I think of digital transformation as being an imperative right now. And companies that are leaning into that are, are going to be years from now thanking, thanking themselves that they spent this time to innovate. It doesn't seem like a time to innovate, but boy, if there is any time, it is absolutely now to, to innovate and accelerate those longer term transformation plans that companies were thinking about. 
And then from the sec second piece around employees and the hiring, I think, again, make it easy. And your employees come first, your customers, the candidates that are, that are interviewing. We're looking at equality, inclusivity, diversity in the people that you're bringing in. And the companies that are doing that and leaning into that are going to now also have the benefits longer term of a workforce that is, is proud to be a part of the companies and really get back to that diversity of thought that you're gonna have as well. And that's gonna, that's gonna help the companies. And we have solutions to help companies be able to do that and to make it, make it easy. I love that recommendation. It may not feel like the time to innovate, but it is. And I think we're starting to see some of that across the uh, federal sector. So uh, I think great advice. Uh, Amy, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. So let me thank my guest, Amy Button, the Vice President of Aerospace Defense and Government Systems Integrators at Salesforce. Amy, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Jason. I'm Jason Miller, and you've been listening to the discussion, Innovation and in Government, sponsored by Kerasoft on Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search innovation.